Hi, Cynthia. <laughs> okay, so just wanted to let you know that we're um, going to be doing a little filming today about these big chunky blankets. I'm sure you've seen these all on, you know, Pinterest and Instagram and Facebook. They're, they're these incredibly beautiful hand knit chunky blankets. I'm here with Sarah. Sarah's the owner of Mama Knows Luxury and this company is the one that uh, puts together these amazing kits and you send them all over the world, don't you? Yes, we just hit our 500th sale on Etsy. Amazing. Wow. So Sarah is here today because we're going to be one of her uh, preferred makers. We're going to be selling these kits in our store and Sarah is going to show us how to put one together today. Perfect. All right, so why don't we just dig right in. Sarah, tell me what you brought today. So today I brought a four pound ball of our bright red merino wool. It's from Ashland Bay out of the States. It's incredibly soft. It is. This has got to be what? Um, 19, 20 microns? 21 and a half. 21 and a half microns, you guys. That is very, very good quality. It is. And the bright red we thought we'd do in, in time for Christmas. Love it. We love it. Um, and so a four pound ball is enough to make a nice little lap throw. Um, it's a perfect size for someone who's a beginner. It, this ball in particular came tightly wrapped, so we're just gonna yeah. unravel as we go. Okay, and so you just uh, take a little bit off and enough to start working with, right? Right. So I've, I've heard that there's a couple different ways we can do this, Sarah. You can do it by hand, right? just by making loops. And in fact, for, for beginners, for people who see this online or you know, aren't necessarily experienced knitters, we right. recommend that you hand knit flat on the table without the needles. Okay. And then for somebody who maybe say one of our customers who really does a lot of knitting and they're used to using needles, they can use needles too. Right. So we've got our giant um, circular knitting needles. Whoa. <laughs> so these are locally handmade in Beaumont, Alberta by a toy maker called MDH Toys. They're hand laved. Um, it's wow. pop poplar, so they're incredibly lightweight mm -hmm. and and smooth. I always look for this in a needle, right? Right, right. And the cable is designed to be just long enough to support up to an eight pound blanket. We don't recommend Perfect. using needles for anything larger than eight pounds. Okay, it just gets too heavy yeah. for turning at the end. I had a lady who made her own out of pipe, and they were really long. They were straight needles, and she said. When she was on the couch, nobody else could be there with her, you know? It was just like right. manipulating we, a boat. We actually do offer a kit that includes wooden tips and wooden ends, and it comes with rubber grommets, and you take your kit to the plumbing supply, and you no show kidding. it to them, and after they stop laughing at you, they find <laughs> you a piece of pipe that your tips and ends will fit into, oh. and you can make your own giant needles. Amazing. Well, you've taken all, a lot of the work out of it, though. With this, I mean, this is great, right? This is all anybody really needs right. to make a really nice size blanket. Right. Okay. So show us, how do you begin? How do you start with this? <coughs> so I'm just showing Barb. In order to start our first row, we're going to start with a crochet chain. So mm -hmm. we made a slip knot. We're reaching through each of our stitches and pulling the next bit, the next piece of yarn up right. and through. And for the size of the stitch, when we stick our hand in, we're making sure that the wool is just snug around the outside of our knuckles. Mm -hmm. So, Barb, you can go ahead and, cro okay. and crochet nope. out 14. Do it again. So, sorry. Of course you do. Of course I do. See, you see how anal I am? No, you know what? The thing is, this wool is an investment. We understand right. that people save and save for it for months and months. Right. And when you get you it, want you it want it to be good. perfect. And you know what? It only takes 45 minutes to an hour to make a blanket. Oh, wow. So okay. you might as well pull it all out and make it again. Mm -hmm. See, that looks better to me. They're a little bit more uniform. Right. And as long as they're not too snug, because you don't want your blanket to have that sort of right short that end that's that standard in crochet, you know, if you, if you do your first chain too tightly. Yes. So how many of these chains would you do for the bottom row of a blanket? Uh, for a four pound blanket, we're gonna say about 14. Now, 14. 
given your tension, which is probably bigger than yours, you could pro you could do anywhere from 12 to 16. Okay. So because the wool is so big, everything's exaggerated. So everything you know about knitting right. is really going to show here in these blankets. Right. So we, we set everything as an estimate and a recommendation. We have a graphic that we use that says, if you make a four pound blanket, we expect that you'll get a blanket that's this size and six pounds will give you this size. Right. The reality is that your final finished size is going to vary vastly depending on your tension. Well, there's 11 and they're pretty good. This, this one's a little bit out, but I don't think I mind that. I'm well, and when we start in. pulling our loops up through, yep. everything from here up is going to be ah. covered. Perfect. So that will go to the back of your work. So this top row is actually your purl side, and this bottom row is the bottom of your blanket. Ah. Your tension is actually quite a, is actually fairly tight, mm -hmm. so I would go the full 14. Okay, I'll do three more. One. Two. Cynthia, did you have any questions? So if you're casting on with needles, um, with the with the knitting needles, right. yeah. What do you do? You do a um, long tail cast on? Do you do a knitted cast on? I am I am guilty of using a long tail cast on for pretty much everything. Okay. Um. So we do recommend that you use the long tail cast on. It's nice and simple. You get a uniform tension. Okay. Um. So absolutely, and you can even do the long tail cast on in hand knitting using your arm. Um. So one of the videos that we have by Dave Rose. What she's done is long tail cast it onto her arms and then she just slides it off her arm and drops it onto the table and starts working the blanket. Oh, okay. Neat. Okay. All right, let's get going. All right, so now what do we do? So now I'm going to do row two. So this is my foundation row and now I'm going to go this way, right? Right. So you told me I'm just going to go and pick this and pull it through. Right. And this one I'm going to make a little bit tighter. Right. Is that right? So we'll make the first stitch of every row a little bit tighter mm -hmm. so that our edges are nice and even and uniform. Right. This, so this is going to go up like that. Right. And, and then what I like to do is actually pull the loop up and push it down flat. Okay. And then at, and as we work. And so at, I can see where we're going. Right. And at the end of every row, I do like to count the stitches. It's only 14 stitches. It's worth it. Right. It's e so easy for one of these to pop behind and you get the whole blanket done and then it's sticking out. Yeah. And you have to do it again. So so well, now do I go through here or here? So we're going to go right into the center of each one of our chains okay. and pull up loops just like this. Oh, so I don't go, I don't do chaining anymore. I'm no. just going to pull up loops. I get it. Like this? Yep. And what we like to do is make sure that the working end of our stitch is always on the side of the stitch of the direction that we're going. Right. So this yarn here has to be going the same direction. So if you look at these two stitches, this one's slightly shorter. Yeah. And this one's slightly taller. And after each stitch, I like to just push it down okay. so that they stay nice and uniform and even. Just like that? Yep. I think it's easier for would be easier for me with knitting needles, uh, but maybe that's just because I'm such a avid knitter. Well, like I said, people who are experienced with knitting find the, e the needles very easy. Yeah, but for people who've never used it before, explaining the, the composition of this is so simple. And once you've mastered that first row, you only get better. Now I'm I'm in there. Do I go in here? Yeah, or in here? Right in the center oh, okay. of the. That next chain. It seems like it's tighter now. And it may be. So again, it's going to be a matter of adjusting your tension as you go, mm -hmm. trying to keep the tops of your stitches all even. After right. the first row, it starts to lay flat. Okay. When was the last time you did four inches per row in 10 minutes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know that's true, isn't it? Yeah. Because it seems to me that m once you get this first row done, you've got about four inches of your blanket already completed. I right. Guess, Altogether, yeah. it's only going to be 18 to 20 rows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Keep look how fast this goes. We're almost done the first row. Are so, you? Sarah, I have 15 loops here now instead of 14. Should I have not done the last one? 
It looks like you somewhere in here you picked up an extra oh. an extra stitch. Now okay. you have two options. You can leave it and continue on, mm -hmm. or you can pull it out and start again. I suspect right here, oh, yeah, remember yeah. when we were looking at the chain at the beginning, you had sort of a twist here? Yep. And I suspect you pulled an extra stitch up in here. Now, Maybe. I would say that it's actually gone ahead and made the initial chain lay flat. If it were me, I would just continue on and mm -hmm. maintain 15 stitches for the rest of okay. the blanket. And it looks pretty good. I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I might have done 15 chains too. You may have. You may have. So again, there's tons of flexibility here. Okay. All right, so row two. So is it just the same thing going back? Right, but this, so remember that we're going to make the first stitch smaller. I like to unravel some from right. the ball before I start. So here's a little trick that I use all the time. The lovely thing about hand knitting is that if it's time to refill your wine or if your kids need you or whatever it is, you can leave it sitting on the table and you can walk away. I like to always send my yarn in the direction that I'm traveling so that when I come back to work on it, I haven't lost my way. Because it's easy enough to be three quarters of the way through a row, come back, not realize you still have those other stitches and start going back and forth here Yes. and leave those open. So yeah. I always just unravel a couple of yards from the ball, okay. send them in the direction that I'm going, sort of as a guide. So now when we go in the opposite direction, as long as we're ensuring that our working end is going in the direction that we're going in right. to prevent the twisting of the stitches, we're okay. just going to do the exact same thing. Okay. And again, this first one will be just a little bit shorter That's right. than the others. Okay. And do you have to make sure that the loops are not twisted? Right. So what I like to do is once I've pulled the loop through, I like to ah. pull it nice and flat. So okay. you might need to twist it a little bit. And I like to just sort of get it to lay flat. Okay. That helps to control your tension. So Barb, your mm -hmm. tension is actually on the tighter side. Okay. And um, so what we've seen is people can vary the tension so much. I'll give you an example. Um, the All About Ami knit pattern with the needles is a six pound blanket. And her finished size is somewhere around 38 inches by 52 inches. Uh -huh. I've got a preferred maker who sells six pound blankets and she uses a much looser tension and her finished size is 42 by 60. Wow. That's so she gains almost an additional 10 inches on the, the blanket same... with the same amount of wool, but a different tension. Okay. So at this tension, you're going to come out with a nice dense blanket that's super soft and still nice and flexible with very little holes mm -hmm. between the stitches. Nice and cushy. But ultimately, it'll be a smaller, smaller blanket than someone else might get. And that's fine for me. Right. Right. What about tension? So do you find that um, a blanket knit at a tighter tension um, is less likely to pill or a braid? No, does it matter? It does. Tension's not gonna. Tension is not going to prevent uh, pilling. It's not. So, yeah. working with a, a woolen top um, comes with uh, the opportunity to set realistic expectations. Mm -hmm. So I always say, ask yourself if you had saved up forever and bought yourself a three thousand dollar Armani suit, how would you treat it? And the answer to that question is the same answer to this question. Um, it's a delicate fiber, it's completely unspun, it's not treated, which means that over time it is going to pill, it's going to shed, it's going to tear. Um, now it's going to do so significantly less than someone suggests, but if this is going to be a decor piece that is going to sit and look beautiful and be touched very little, then we recommend that you make the blanket and leave it exactly as it is. If this is going to be a blanket that you're going to cuddle under and love and that's going to be part of your family, then we recommend pre-felting the wool. And we've provided videos on the website that show you how to put the blanket through the wash and start the felting process evenly across the blanket um, instead of allowing it to happen naturally in the mm -hmm. high traffic areas of the blanket. Perfect. And we'll put a link into that in right. this video. Yep. Great. Or in our show notes. Super. So Our, that's looking really how pretty. is this looking yeah. yeah I'm starting to just go back a little bit though and make these ones a little bit bigger that's that 13 Sarah yeah okay so I've got two more to do this is so much fun are you oh, having fun careful. you're 
you're Am missing. I in the wrong spot? So no, you just what you did there was you almost went through this loop. Right. When you need to go through this oh, loop. Oh, good to know. Okay. Did you guys see that? Do it again. I accidentally here. Here's my 14th, and I'm looking for my 15th, and I was going to go in here. And Sarah's saying, nope, nope, I want to go in here. Right. And this was the one that um, we left to kind of go up the side. Right, and that's why I always like to pull the stitches and pat them down and to try and keep them, them because they like to sort of bend out on their own. Right. So, for example, this one here mm -hmm. might like to try and hide underneath his neighbor. Oh, right. And as you're knitting along, you might miss him. Right. And you may go several rows. So that's, this is why I say after every single row, take a quick second to count your stitches. Make sure that you're still where you were when you started. Mm -hmm. There. Well, hey, this is looking pretty good, don't you think? Yes. Okay, so we're going to come back Kay. in uh, 10 minutes yeah. and see your finished product. Okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so before we let Sarah go, we thought we would just take a minute to have Sarah show us how to bind off. Right. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're, we're just, we've got our 15 loops, and it looks really short because mm -hmm. I've only done two rows. We're just right. going to bind off this short section. Now, you with your blanket at home will have the whole thing done. Right. But to speed things up, because you know we have another podcast to film today, right. so so what we're going to do is we've got our yarn and we're going all in the same direction, like Sarah told us. Our yarn's going this way, and now we're going to bind off, right, Sarah? Right. So I'm going to stick my fingers through the first stitch. So you're just going to knit two stitches, just like you've been doing all along. Okay. So we'll just pull up a new loop. Got it. One. And then the next one. And then the next one. So then to make it nice and uniform, what we're going to do is we're going to go in the front of this stitch. Okay. And then we're going to take our hand and go in the front of the next stitch. Got it. And we'll pull a loop up through oh, the two. That's easy. Okay, so that's just like binding off. Right, and we want to pull a little more yarn through. So we want this top stitch that we've now made to be about the same size as all the rest have been. Okay. So now we'll knit this next one. Because this one's going to kind of lay on top, right. isn't it? Right, right. Got it. So, oh no, so oh. we'll knit this next oh, one. Oh, right, gotcha. And be careful that when you do it, your stitches don't twist. So I just want to show you, see how... Is that twisted? What mm -hmm. you did was ah. your, your loop got twisted and you went in the back instead of the front. Just gotcha. make sure that you're always ensuring that your stitches are not well, twisted. Good. Okay, good, good, good. You did that on purpose so we could have no. a, learning, <laughs> a learning opportunity. Yeah. She's so kind. Uh. <laughs> Okay. okay, so go through the front of this one. Okay. And the front of this one. Okay. And pull up two. Oh. Or pull up one, sorry. Okay. And we're just going to continue this all the way down. So now we've got one. So now we'll pull one stitch up through there. So make sure it's not twisted. And you get used to seeing that with your I eye. I suppose, yeah. So again, through the front of this one. Right. Through the front of this one and pull up a new one. Right. So now you can start to see how the how the Look, bind off goes, beautiful. and it's very lovely. It, you actually see the beauty of the stitches. Yes. Mm -hmm. And again, going through the front and the front prevents it from looking twisted and uneven. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to continue this all the way okay. to the end. And yeah. when we get to the end, we're just going to pull the strand right through. Once we have our final loop, mm -hmm. um, what we'll do is we'll pull, imagine this was the end of our yarn, and it's yeah. not, but all we're going to do is pull the loop tight. And I like to just, so imagine if this were an end. Yeah. Just and I like to right just through. slide it, I, instead of pulling it tight like a knot, I like to slide the stitch over top of itself like this, oh. and then we'll just felt our end in. in. So again, it's all about finesse. Yeah. Oh, Sarah, thank you so much for showing us how to, this is super easy. It is so easy. I can see how you'd have them done in a couple of hours. Right, and, and for your advanced knitters, I know here at River City, a lot of the people who come mm -hmm. are more advanced knitters. Once you've mastered this, and once you've gotten used to the feel of the yarn and sort of the way working with big yarn works, you can start to integrate pearls and the seed stitch, and you can make poofs and cushions cables and, and, and cables and everything else. Wow. Uh, Barb, you were wondering about yeah. uh, dealing with the, the tails or the ends, That's right? right. Yeah. So Sarah's going to show us uh, how to felt these ends in. Now, you've just turned that blanket upside down, right? Right. So mm -hmm. I like to work on the back of the blanket when I'm finishing. Okay. So this is the pearl side. Mm -hmm. And for today, we're just doing a straight knit stitch. You might start to add some texture in with knits and pearls. That can be done through hand knitting. Seed stitch. Yeah, whatever you may do. Um, but in this case, we've got a back and a front, and we're just going to work on the pearl side. 
So in order to felt in the ends, what I like to do is take my end and you only need a one to two inch end. This is actually quite a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. If I were to take some off, right, I would probably trim some off and then throw that into my dryer ball wool collection or whatever right. it may be. That's right. You can make dryer balls with mm -hmm. these. With your leftovers. So all I'll do is I'll take the roving and I'll separate it usually into three, maybe four, depending on the thickness. And I'll weave it like a standard weave. So I'll find sort of, what I like to do is take the opportunity to use the ends to mask any maybe imper imperfections. Because I had a little hole there. Right. So with our beginning chain, there's a little bit of a gap here that isn't through the rest of the blanket. So I might actually come with this end and come underneath and I might sort of fill that hole in a little bit by coming around like this. Neat. Just okay. to block it off. And then all I'm going to do is lay this end over um, over a stitch to get it to blend in mm -hmm. um, and felt it in. With felting needles? With a felting needle. Well, could you show us that just so quickly? All of our kits come with a felting kit. It includes um, your your foam. foam for underneath and a basic felting needle. So this Super. is a single needle. Um, and all we're going to do is stick our foam underneath our work, make sure that we're not doubled up anywhere. And with these blankets, finesse is key. So we encourage you to keep your felting needle and use it. If you get a snag or a pull mm. or if an end pops out, pull out your felting needle. You can quickly fix that snag, whatever right. it may be. Um, so all we're going to do is just with the gentlest of pokes, start to finish that end into the stitch and make it blend as much as we can. We're not trying to make a stiff fabric here. In fact, we're trying to make this as unnoticeable as possible. So all we're going to do is the lightest amount of felting as possible. But look at that. You can see already that end has just kind of melted right in there. A high quality soft yarn like this with mm -hmm. this type of micron count felt like a dream. Yeah. It really does. And so it Look only takes that. that little amount. We're talking, you know, 10 to 20 stabs and mm -hmm. you're done. And I would leave it like that. And okay. then later if it starts to pop out a little bit more, go back and do it. But less is mm -hmm. definitely more, more with these. Nice. So then I'll just continue on. I'll find a way to weave the rest of these ends over. The main thing, so again, I'm going to cover that hole that you had again. Yeah. So I'll come this way. The main thing is that we want it to blend in with the blanket. Right. Not cause great lumps and not be very noticeable to the eye. So here, I'll work on the back of this stitch. So I might just felt this here. And then I'll just bring this end and sort of tuck it in here. Yeah. Well, that's super simple, isn't it? Could you even tuck the end right into the inside of the blanket? You and, absolutely could and separate and open your stitches, right? The more, so eventually this will sort of flatten out and yeah. you'll struggle to even find the end. Mm -hmm. What if you just got it a little bit wet? Would that help? Uh, so, okay, so as soon as you touch this wool with water, it fuses the fibers together. And so I would not recommend attempting to wet felt the ends with these blankets. We do recommend putting your blanket through the wash to create an even felt, an even sealing of the fibers across the entire blanket if it's going to be a blanket that you're going to use to increase durability. But for finishing the ends, because it's such a delicate process, I, I don't recommend using water. Okay. okay. The single needle. So we, um, for me, I've got a, we, ha I have a, felting needle that actually has seven of these needles worked in mm -hmm. and to finish these ends I'm talking one two three stabs and it's done right yeah do you want to show us right so this is my personal mega felter wow. that I use because I do a lot of felting I make dryer balls and I and I do mm -hmm. these blankets and these uh, these courses and so I bring this with me to workshops just to help people finish their blankets a little quicker. Faster. Um, and so you could use a mega felter like this if you had one. And we're literally talking about the lightest of pokes and it's going to blend your blanket. And then what Barb did, just taking her finger and smoothing it out. Yeah. And uh, Barb's suggestion is really quite good. 
if instead of doing it on an open stitch like this, you could have opened up your blanket and felt it to the inside of your stitch, mm -hmm. and then that would hide it even more. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But less is definitely more with the ends, finishing of ends with these blankets. Super. Perfect. You'd want one of these if you go into commercial production, wouldn't right. you? Yeah. <laughs> so if anybody wants to make these and sell these, this is a great little tool. Right. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. okay, thanks well, Sarah. All I'm right. just going to keep on going okay. and we'll see when it's done. Okay, sounds good.